Hi there, Johnny here. You are here probably wondering, hmm, should I get the M1 MacBook Air in 2022 or should I wait? Well, I know there are actually rumors right now about the new M2 MacBook Air and it has actually been increasing over the years. And of course, in the past few months, I've actually done quite a number of videos documenting my switch from Windows to Mac. So feel free to click some of the videos here or I may also include the link in the description section below. But seriously, this particular base model M1 MacBook Air well, has not only changed the way I feel about the Apple computers, uh, but it has also completely changed the way I work on the daily basis. In short, this is the best computer I've ever used. Shocking, definitely especially considering that I was a long-time window user. But welcome to my long-term review of this base model M1 MacBook Air after using it for almost one year and why I think you should get one. Now you've probably seen a million review videos on this machine. So this is not a benchmark video, but I'm going to bring you through how I use this machine on any typical day. Right off the bat, right off the bat, I have probably done like hundreds of video calls with this thing. The webcam, even though it's only 720p, but overall it offers better colors, better skin tones, and the overall brighter picture if compared with my Lenovo Legion 5 gaming laptop. But what's really impressive is the microphone quality. I use it not only for my Zoom sessions, but also to record voice memos, WhatsApp, audios, WhatsApp calls, FaceTimes, making phone calls, etc, etc. Despite this being only 13 inch, the built-in speakers are just mind-blowing with large and powerful output, which really puts a lot of premium Windows laptop to shame. If you want some me-only moments, the headphone audio jack is respectable, delivering clean, loud audio regardless of the workload. Keyboard backlight is available in the control center for manual adjustments, but you can always set it to auto adjust in the system preferences. The touchpad, what more can I say? This is the best built-in touchpad ever. Zero complaints. Now, for the two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left, honestly, for my own use with a simple hub for the past one year, it's no issue. One of the ports, I run my Ugreen 10-in-1 USB-C hub with 100 watt power delivery delivery and this is the command center for my desk setup. It connects to my 22 inch monitor, my external hard disk as well as my flash drive and SD cards. It also has an e port if I ever require faster connections. The second port, I use it simply with my Recompact 83 key keyboard and wireless mouse or if I need to connect my iPhone directly via cable and use the machine as a monitor while I adjust the camera angles. Now, this machine only allows you to connect natively one external monitor. For me, it's perfectly fine. I'm not running like multiple monitors, you know, set up with my M1 Air. Having said that, if I ever want to add a second monitor in the future, I can do so with an easy upgrade and get a dual HDMI, you know, USB-C hub from Hyperdrive. So in the morning, I'll have my coffee and breakfast at the coffee table in the living room. I will walk into my computer room, bring out the device and set it on the table. The instant on feature is just fantastic as that means there is absolutely no waiting around. The fingerprint unlock or touch ID, which is also the power button, allows me to unlock my machine instantly. I can also use it to approve my purchases and automatically fill in my password. If I want to lay back, I could always sit back in the sofa, put it directly on my lap, since it is fanless. When I'm ready for some serious work, I will head back to my computer room and the Ugreen hub is reconnected to this thing. Primarily, I use iMovie for video editing, preview for light photo editing, and thumbnail creations. Coming from being a long time Windows user, here's something which I truly appreciate about this machine and that's performance in a fanless chassis and how it continues to deliver consistent performance even while on battery. This means that you don't get any drop in performance when you plug out the power cable, which is not something I can say for any Windows laptop. Now, I'm also confident to say that everything you've heard about the battery is true. 
I usually start off my mornings with a fully charged M1 Air, screen brightness at 50%, Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth on, and I'll have like multiple apps running, WhatsApp, Telegram, Safari, Apple Music playing in the background, and editing a 1080p video in iMovie. And it can last me at least eight hours straight before I need to scramble for power at 10%. On days when I'm doing simple productivity tasks like you know, Word, Excel, emails and preparing my script, researching contents, watching YouTube videos and not doing any video editing, it only loses around 40% battery after an entire day. And what's even more impressive is that this machine only needs 30 watts of power, which also means all I need is a small and compact 30 watt charger in my backpack if I need to travel. So in general, battery life is so good that it's never a problem. I lose about 10% per two hours whenever I'm doing my productivity tasks. Which comes to the most important question. What can I say after using this machine for almost a year? Should you get it? Should you wait? Well, I have a different view on that. Me personally, I never think it's worth waiting for tech. New techs are coming out every single year, better than the last one, and in sometimes even making the previous version feel absolutely obsolete. Honestly speaking from me to you, I feel that it's a waste of energy to time your tech purchases and buying decision. This is the best laptop you can buy for a thousand bucks right now in terms of performance, battery life, etc. in one slick package without any major compromises. It has handled all the tasks I threw at it incredibly well in the past one year. In today's context, the M1 MacBook Air meets so many needs of the vast majority of us. And I personally won't hesitate a second to get this machine if I knew I need to get one today. So there you have it. Those are my personal thoughts after using it for one year. Hope you guys enjoy it. If it did, show your support by smashing a like button and subscribing to my channel if you haven't. But most importantly, share my content with your friends who are considering to get the M1 Mac. Let me know what you think. If you have experienced the M1 Air or you're like me, you switch from Windows to Mac. And I'll see you in the next one.